Welcome to Life as a Cancer Survivor. In today's video, I'm gonna discuss when I got an intestinal blockage and all of the chaos that ensued around it. My name is Jelena, and I was diagnosed with stage three rectal cancer in May of 2016. Before my diagnosis, I was healthy, active, and thought that I was doing everything that I could to avoid any major health problems. I started this channel to discuss how life is like going through treatment and how life just doesn't go back to normal once treatment is over. Let me start the story three days before my intestinal blockage, which was the day of my last full Fox infusion. My mom had flown into town to be with me for that last infusion, so she came with me to the cancer center. The neuropathy in my feet, it had been getting worse progressively and the tingling was lasting and lingering longer and longer. So my oncologist decided to completely cut out the oxaliplatin from that final infusion. So since the oxaliplatin was gone, the infusion itself was only about a half hour long. So we were in and out pretty fast. And when I came home, I hopped into bed for my usual post chemo nap. Five minutes maybe had passed and I get a text on my phone. It's my husband, John. He's in the urgent care. Um, they think that he has appendicitis and he's asking me to come and be with him at the urgent care. So I get out of bed and I drive over to the urgent care with the chemo pump attached to me. When I got to the urgent care, John was hooked up to an IV uh, because he had thrown up twice <laughs> and they also had him in a hospital bed. They had a CT scan machine there at the urgent care so he was waiting his turn to go in and get a CT scan because surgeons won't operate on appendicitis patients until it's been confirmed via CT scan because they opened up too many people that didn't actually have appendicitis. So gotta have a CT scan confirming it. Um, so it took about two hours for us to get those results. So around 5 p.m. it was confirmed, yes, he had appendicitis and it needed removed. Um, but since he had been given morphine, uh, I wasn't allowed to drive him. So they had to transport him to the hospital in an ambulance and I followed behind the ambulance in my car. When we got there, he got, you know, a straight ticket into the emergency room, but I had to go in through the normal emergency room entrance. And since I had the chemo pump on, it set off the metal detector and they had to hand wand me before I could go back. I stayed with John for a little bit, um, but then once we found out when the surgery was and all that, he said I could go home. So I went home and ate dinner put Mael to bed, our daughter, and then around 9.30, he got out of surgery and I went to visit him. Since it was so late at night, um, they kept him overnight to observe him and make sure that he didn't have any complications. When he woke up in the morning, he was fine and was discharged and was home by lunch. The next day, my chemo pump alarm went off for the very last time, telling me I was done. I had to wait a little bit before my appointment at the cancer center to get the pump detached from me. But then once I did, I was completely done with chemo. It was pretty uneventful because I was pretty tired and didn't feel like celebrating. I just went home, we had dinner, um, watched a little bit of TV, and then I went to bed. I woke up around 4 a.m. that night and I had some pain right underneath my rib cage here. I got out of bed, I went to the bathroom, I emptied my ileostomy bag and got back into bed. The pain was still there. I tossed and turned, trying to find a comfortable position and that didn't really seem to work either. The pain started getting worse and there was no chance that I was falling back asleep. My tossing and turning and maybe a little bit of some deep sighing had woken John up and he asked if I was okay. I told him that I was feeling some pain underneath my ribs and it was kind of increasing. And I said I wanted to go downstairs and sit on the couch and see if that different position would help. So he came down with me, um, but as I was sitting on the couch, the pain, it just started intensifying. So I told him that, and so he said we should go to the emergency room. So he went and grabbed my coat and brought it over to me. Um, but I tried to get up to put the coat on 
but the pain was just so much I just crumbled to the ground. Um, and I tried to gather up enough strength to stand up and I just couldn't. So he decided to call an ambulance. So he called 911 and um, around 5.45 in the morning, the ambulance showed up and we had three EMTs in our living room. They took my vitals while I gave them a summary of my cancer health history. Um, and then they decided that I was in too much pain to transport as is. So they needed to insert an IV into my arm um, so that they could give me some pain medication to safely transport me. Um, since they were just EMTs, they weren't allowed to access my port, so they had to try and find a vein in my arm, but chemo had wrecked the veins in my arm, so it was really hard for them to find a vein and get an IV in. They eventually did finally get a vein and an IV placed um, and gave me some pain medication. It took the edge off, but there was still plenty of pain that was there. Around that time, my mom wandered downstairs because she heard all these men's voices in our living room. We told her that I was going to be transported to the hospital right down the street and asked her if she could stay home um, while Mayel slept and John would come to the hospital with me and keep her updated and let her know when her and Mayel could come and visit me. Then I was able to get myself up on the gurney and they wheeled me out to the ambulance around 6.15 in the morning. Since it was that early, they didn't turn the siren on, but I could see the flashing lights in the morning fog out the window. When I got to the hospital, they wheeled me into a room in the emergency department, and the first thing I had to do was put a hospital gown on. I was allowed to leave my pajama pants on. Um, I just had to change my shirt and put the gown on. They also gave me a barf bag in case I got nauseous. Then I was started on a fentanyl but it stopped working before I was allowed to take the next dose and I was back to being in some pretty severe pain, about an eight out of 10 on the pain scale. Then they tried Dilaudid, but I had the same lousy results. It didn't work either. I had to wait a while for a pre-scan pregnancy test to come through to confirm that I wasn't pregnant before I was allowed to go in and get a CT scan to try and figure out what was going on. After an hour or two, honestly, neither of us remember. It seemed like it was forever, but it wasn't quite forever. Um, an ED doc came in, told us that the results were inconclusive on the CT scan. He said that they were suspecting I had a partial intestinal blockage, but not a complete blockage. A little bit later, Dr. K, he came in and he said that it was a surgical problem, not a medical problem but they would admit me just so that they could manage my pain while the partial blockage resolved itself. I was sent up to a room and around two or three that afternoon, Dr. K came back in to see how my pain was. I was still in pain, but it had gone down to about a four or five on that pain scale. Then he said he would come back before his shift was over at like six, but we never saw him again. Then as the, even, as the evening approached, my pain started ramping up. Around 7 p.m., my pain peaked at a constant nine on the scale and I started throwing up in bed. It was a big deal that I was throwing up because it had been like 15 years since I had last thrown up. Yes, I made it through pregnancy, college, and chemotherapy without ever vomiting. No one was responding to my call button. And finally, when a nurse came down, she said there wasn't anything they could do for me because they can't change my pain meds. Finally, around 10 p.m., they called the doctor on call and I was approved to get started on morphine and finally my pain was under control. John called my surgeon's office, but they said they couldn't do anything for me unless I was transferred to the hospital that was connected to the cancer center, even though I was at a hospital that was in, within the same system. I wanted to be transferred out of there. So they made arrangements for an ambulance to pick me up in the morning and take me over to the other hospital that's attached to the cancer center. The next morning, the ambulance crew came up to my room. I hopped onto their gurney and took the 20 minute ride to the new hospital. I guess my body didn't want to be outdone by my husband's one ambulance ride um, because I hadn't had one yet as a cancer patient. So it decided that I needed two ambulance rides <laughs> that week. Within an hour of arriving, 
a doctor came to my room. She said that I had a blockage, that I needed to just be on IV hydration and nutrition for the rest of the day to see if the blockage would work its way out. And then if it wasn't working by that evening, then um, they would consider putting an NG tube in, which is a tube that goes in your nose and all the way down to your stomach and it pumps basically everything out of your stomach out. Luckily, the pain was subsiding and it seemed like the blockage was kind of working its way out. By mid-afternoon, the pain meds were working well enough that I was up and walking the halls with my daughter, Mayel. The next morning, I had improved enough that I was okay to begin on the glorious liquids diet. But before breakfast came, I made an epic mess in my bathroom. It was early, probably 6 a.m. or so, and I got out of bed, go to the bathroom. So in the bathroom, they had the pitcher that I was supposed to empty my ostomy bag into so they could track that output. And then they also had the hat in the toilet, which here's a picture of it, so that they could collect my urine and count how much urine I was passing as well. So since I had to empty my ostomy bag into this pitcher kind of thing on the floor, it was a little awkward trying to get down low enough so that the bag would empty into it. And since I had been on an all liquid diet since Thursday, and this was now Sunday, um, everything that was coming out was really liquidy. So as soon as I opened up the bag to empty it, everything was just like gushing out. It knocked the pitcher over and then the output, it just splashed all over on the floor in the bathroom. I managed to be able to reach the toilet paper to wipe off my bag and then wash my hands and then got out of the bathroom and hit the button on the remote for a nurse. I felt really embarrassed and bad that someone was gonna have to come and clean that disgusting mess up, but I, there wasn't any way that I could clean it up, so somebody had to do it. So the nurse sent someone down to clean up the mess, uh, but the output, it was so yellow, it actually stained the floor in the bathroom, and even after it had been cleaned up, there was still like a yellow tint to it. After that disaster, <laughs> it was time for breakfast. I had jello and vegetable broth. It tasted so good because I hadn't eaten anything since Thursday night and this was Sunday morning. The rest of the day I continued to improve and spent the day walking the halls and snuggling in my bed with my L. By the evening my ileostomy seemed to be working normal again so they had me try regular foods and I didn't have any troubles at all. The next morning I was feeling back to normal and I was released from the hospital before lunch. I didn't ever have like an obvious blockage that came out of my ileostomy, nor did I have like an excessive rush of liquid come out, like the blockage had all of a sudden cleared. Um, but it was obvious that it had clean cleared itself up because I wasn't having the pain anymore and I was able to eat and pass stool just fine out of my ostomy now. Thank goodness that was the only experience that I've had so far with a blockage because that was by far the worst pain that I've ever had in my life. Now, if you could please do me a quick favor and click on the like button down here, I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you're not subscribed already, click on that subscribe button down there, click on the bell so that you'll be notified when all of my future videos are uploaded. Thank you guys for watching.